Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna try, I've got some lovely glare if I keep my face right here, so I'll just do that, perfect. Okay, um, hello everyone, and welcome to the uh, debut, the first episode of the Kiddo Ditto Crafts podcast. Um, my name is Kira, and I am a knitter, a painter, a sewist, uh, and just a crafty person in general, have been since I was a kid. Um, and I'm excited to be here. And uh, I've been thinking about starting a podcast for a while just because um, I've been following uh, lots of YouTube podcasters, knitting podcasters um, for about a year now. Um, and you guys all make it look so fun. So wanted to join in. Um, yeah, so uh, it's, let's see, time and place. We are, it's uh, November of 2020. So crazy time to be alive. Um, uh, and with COVID, uh, it seems like everyone is connecting more digitally these days anyway. And uh, I find myself with lots of extra time on my hands. So it seemed like the perfect time to start a podcast. That said, um, I don't know what my schedule will be, if I'll be able to keep it up on a regular basis. This is just supposed to be fun. I have a tendency to uh, overextend myself and overcommit myself and um, turn fun things into burdens. <laughs> so I'm really going to try not to do that with this because this is supposed to be fun. Um, you might see my little kitties over there. I've got William Blake. He's the black one and nobody is the tabby. Um, they may decide to pop in uh, at some point during the episode. We shall see. Um, so, first we'll start with what I'm wearing. Um, I've got these lovely earrings by Dag Nabbit Designs. Uh, she is based in Richmond, Virginia. It's acrylic jewelry, and these are little lightning bolts, which I just love. I'm wearing my Agatha cardigan, um, which was my second Andy Satterland knit. Um, it's got beautiful lace. Um, it was my first lace project and since it was in a worsted weight it seemed less intimidating and I'm really glad that I chose this for my first um, lace project. I think it fits me really well. I love the buttons um, and yeah it's it's a favorite and it's very very cozy. Um, I'm also wearing my Ida jersey dress. Uh, the pattern is by Ida Victoria. Uh, you can find her on Etsy. Um, and this is a pattern that I have made several dresses out of already with slight variations. Um, it has pockets, of course. And um, it's out of this super cute, stretchy rainbow print that I got from Joann's. Um, and then last but not least, I'm wearing my Happylicious Socks uh, by Vicky Vera. I think is how you pronounce that. Uh, Mia, Dom, uh, Mia Demmer. Um, is the designer and dyer behind um, these socks. And I've made a couple pairs now and I just love them. So that is what I am wearing. Um, and we'll move on to finished objects. I've got a couple finished objects that I just finished recently. Um, first is the open wide zippered pouch. Um, the pattern is by Anna Graham. And um, I got the zipper off of Amazon. It's got, it came in a pack of like 20. And it's got some, uh, I do apologize for the cats. They're currently under my chair ripping the stuffing out of it. Um, zipper is resin, uh, resin, plastic, cute colors. And totally match the fabric that I got from Fancy Tiger Crafts in Denver, um, Colorado, uh, which has, these super cute little kitties that are knitting. Some of them have glasses, as both my sisters-in-law pointed out. Um, and it's my first project bag that I've made. Doesn't have any interfacing or batting, and I do have enough fabric left over. I'm going to make myself a skirt, a mini skirt, hopefully, and then um, make another one with interfacing, uh, and one that's slightly bigger, more of a sweater quantity size, because you can never have enough sweater quantity project bags. 
Um, but this was a good first um, attempt. The open wide zippered pouch allows you to open wide your pouch. So, um, and then I got this cute contrast fabric from Joann's. So, yes, William Blake, yes. Uh, my second finished object is a second, oh, spoiler alert for my Chrismica uh, gift recipient. Look away for like 30 seconds to a minute if you're watching, unless you want the surprise to be spoiled, which knowing you, maybe you do. Um, these are another Happylicious, um, pair of Happylicious socks. Uh, links are down in the show notes, of course. Um, these are both knit with two separate um, gradient balls, and then you, you put in the striping yourself. So um, I did get the pattern from her, um, but I basically just do my kind of my own recipe for these. I do them toe up, um, Judy's Magic Cast On, and then I use um, little circulars. I have the shorty set from Chow Goo. Um, I'm a little warm <laughs> with my worsted weight and all the windows closed so the neighbors don't hear me talking to myself. So I've got a little bit of a sweat stash going. Sexy. Um, anyway, I love the way these gradients turned out. Um, my favorite little section, well I have so many favorite little sections, but I just love the colors in here. And I hope that the recipient loves them too. Um, oh, I also did contrasting um, Oh, what is it? Lori's Twisty Bind Off, which um, I have been using, and it's the stretchiest bind off that I've found so far. I tend to be a tight knitter, so um, this is one that, that I seem to be able to get some good stretch out of. Um, so anyway, that's a pair of socks. These knit up super fast. I got them done in less than a week. Finished them, cast them off last night. Um, on to whips. So, um, I have currently have three whips. I'm, um, I've been knitting since June of 2019, so about a year and a half, and I've got started on the good habits early. <laughs> I don't like to have a lot of whips hanging over my head, like three or four max is what I'm comfortable with. And if I so far, I haven't found anything that I can't just kind of push through and, and finish, um, so I don't really let my whips languish. Of course, I'm only a year and a half into my knitting journey so far, so who knows what will happen in the future. But um, anyway, I try to, try to keep it to a manageable amount of whips. So um, this is a pair of socks. This is the Fleet Feet... Um, sock by Fatima Hines. Um, it's a really cool pattern. It's got some cabling and some um, texture, nice texture here. Um, I'll put a picture of the finished pattern over here. Um, and the yarn, I'm super excited to use this yarn. It's um, by a Whimsical Wood Yarn Company. Um, she's based out of like Iowa, I think. I had the pleasure of meeting her at the Flying Needles um, in Williamsburg, Virginia when I lived there. Um, she is a delight and I love her yarn. So this is the Spaz Ass colorway, one of her ass ways. And then I also got this um, cozy from her from at the Harry Potter event I went to at the Flying Needles. Um, so yeah, making slow progress on this. I actually put these down for a while while I was working on gift miss knitting. Um, so that will be one that I pick up probably late December. Um, this is my big comfy chair, by the way. This is where I do all of my knitting. Sometimes I sit on the couch over there, but usually it's from this chair. Um, next on my needles, in my Sharon from Security, project bag. Oh, I didn't talk about this project bag, which I also got from a Whimsical Wood yarn company. It's very cute. Um, it had, I don't remember what the colorway was in it, but it came with a skein of yarn. 
I have it in my stash somewhere. Um, anyway, next up is by Casapinka. So Sharon from Security, actually I have my Sharon Show shawl behind me here, um, is a Casapinka, Sharon from Security is Casapinka's cat, one of her cats. Um, she's an adorable cat and she designed a pattern, which you see behind me, the Sharon Show shawl, which was super fun to knit. So um, when I saw the magical thinking, uh, what, I'll put a picture over here. Um, the magical thinking pullover shawl, not a poncho. Um, I knew I had to cast it on, and actually I cast this on as part of the Blame Dunder Knit knit along, um, which is actually so knit knitting vicariously. Yeah, is the name of her podcast. Um, I've been, I'm all caught up in all her episodes now. And so I got to join in the Blame Dunder Knit Along this year, which is where you eschew all of your obligation knitting, all your giftness knitting, and just cast on something that you've been dying to cast on. So these really aren't my colors, but I thought they were really fun together. So, um, I'm like not super into pastels. Um, but I think that this will look really cool on a, um, over a black dress, which I have a couple of, so. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a poncho, not a poncho, a pullover shawl. Um, and the yarns I'm using in this, I have two by Round Mountain Fibers. Um, this is the Striped Shore Crab, I believe. And then this is Hummingbird Lavender, I think. Um, and then I have some Cascade which I got actually for the Sharon shawl show Sharon show shawl I wasn't super stoked on how it went with these. So I pulled it and grabbed this instead. Actually, no, I traded it out for a gray. Um, but I think it looks really nice together with this. So, um, also have put this down. Ah, falls everywhere. Um, I put this down to work on some gift miss knitting. Of course, I cast it on in the middle of giftness knitting um, because of Blame Dunder Knit Along. Um, but I will pick that back up as soon as this next project is done. This is just a bag, just a linen bag, which is actually kind of shitty for knitting because my needles poke through it all the time. Um, but it's big enough for this ginormous thing, which also is giftmas. Um, so Logan, if you happen to be watching, look away, um, or don't, and then tell me you hate it so I can just knit it for myself. <laughs> um, I'm knitting this for my little brother for Christmas. Um, it is the Enchanted Mesa Pullover by Stephen West. This is the first Stephen West design that I have knit, and I am enjoying it quite a lot. If Logan doesn't like it, I will be happy to keep it, because it's just... Fabulous. So there's no um, sleeves at the moment, but um, the sleeve openings are here and here. Of course, I'll put a picture of the um, original pattern picture over there. Um, but it's a bunch of different stuff. It's got... Um, Noro, it's got Malabrigo, it's got something that was unlabeled, it's got Mano Still Uruguay, um, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. But I'm loving the colors, working on the brioche rib now, and then I get to do the sleeves, which I think are going to be the most fun sleeves I ever will do in my life. Um, but anyway, that's this <laughs> ginormous -ness. Um, Enchanted Mesa by Stephen West. It's super fun and I am now very excited to knit more of Stephen West's patterns. I really like the way he writes them. They're very straightforward, very easy, very fun. Um, at least this pattern is so far. So yeah, that's what's currently in my whip spin. Um, oh, I do also have, I've got to go get it. Um, a denim skirt that I'm working on. Um, the pattern is by Spoonflower. 
Tony is like eating his breakfast. Okay, DIY denim skirt by Spoonful Flower. Um, I got this, um, it's denim, yeah, it's like a rust red. Um, I got it from a friend who was sharing some of her fabric stash with me. Um, I think it's vintage, but anyway, I thought it would make a really cute denim mini skirt. So um, it's definitely the most advanced sewing project I've ever taken on. I had to go find where the interfacing was at Joann's. I'm a very beginner sewist. Um, I'm also swamped with whips right now in my seat. Okay. So um, I have the zipper now. I have the interfacing. All my pieces are cut. Um, and now I just have to assemble it. But because it is a uh, more complicated project, I'm a little intimidated by it. So we'll see when that gets done. But it counts as a whip. So um, as far as what's next for me craft-wise, um, I have, um, oh, I gotta go grab that too. Super prepared. My next needle adjacent project, which, um, I get that term from Hey Brownberry, who got it from someone else. I don't remember who. That's how these things work, right? It's in my I do as I please project bag. Um, I will be knitting the Sipilla by Caitlin Hunter. It will be my second Caitlin Hunter um, pattern. And I will be knitting it out of this gorgeousness from Fiber for the People. Um, this is Titan. And you can't really tell when it's in um hank form but it's got the same some of the same gold that's in wood sugar which is gorgeous so these are two really beautiful um fingering weight skeins um from fiber for the people um that i'm very excited to knit with it will be my first fingering weight sweater um yeah and i'm excited I uh, am a little intimidated by how long it's going to take. I'm not a patient knitter or patient person in general, but um, I think it should still be fun, especially with that yarn. That yarn is so gorgeous. I think I'm going to enjoy working with it. So hopefully it won't take me too, too long. I have kind of a unspoken, now spoken goal to cast that on and get it done before the new year. I would like to start the new year with no whips. So my Christmas Eve cast on will probably be a pair of socks and I might go into the new year with one thing on my needles, but that's totally arbitrary. It really doesn't matter. Um, I just like things to be clean, but we'll see. Um, next, um, I don't have the yarn. Well, actually the yarn is back in that case, which has horrible glare in it. Um, I've got some random acrylic uh, red and green and like a sparkly Christmas color hank of something um, that I will be knitting some ornaments out of. So that'll be my the last of my gift miss. So I, I don't do a lot of gift miss knitting um, mostly because I'm a pretty selfish knitter and um, yeah I like Christmas to be fun and relaxing for me too so um, so one person gets one like big project a year is kind of going forward what I think I'll be doing um, because also my closet's going to run out of space soon and I'm going to need to start knitting for other people soon. So tea break, not that I need any more heat. I'm feeling pretty sweaty right now. It's uh, I think in the 60s in Northern California right now, but for some reason our apartment has stayed very warm which is annoying. It's middle end of November and I'm missing the cold in Virginia. We lived in Virginia for two years and uh, we're from this area, my husband and I. Got our kitties in Virginia and uh, I miss it. I miss the weather a lot. Anyway, back to my show notes. Um, oh, so I have 
more. So that's the next thing I want to knit uh, that I plan on casting on as soon as I get one of the current projects off my needles. Um, I've got a lot more of this kitty fabric, so I'll be making myself a mini skirt and then another project bag as well with interfacing. And then my next dress project, um, I have this super cute, it's cotton, um, Christmas plaid. So it's got the little Christmas trees in there that I want to make myself a Christmas dress out of. So I will probably do an altered Ida jersey dress. Now that's made for a jersey knit fabric, that pattern. Um, and I haven't made myself like a full cotton dress yet. I also need to wash this. It feels very stiff. Um, but I have a ton of it, so I will be able to probably make some project bags, fan myself off. Um, but yeah, I'm planning on making like a, I would like to do a t-shirt style dress or a button up style dress. I do have a pattern here that I'm kind of eyeing that I think I might like to alter using my jersey dress um, pattern. Um, I really like the neckline on that. Um, and uh, I think I want to do full length sleeves and a mini skirt on this um, and some buttons. I'm sure I can find cute little Christmas tree buttons or something or maybe a Peter Pan collar. I'm not sure. I'll figure it out. Um, that's kind of the way I approach my sewing, which I know sewing needs a little more precision than knitting. But whatever. If I can wear it like this literally has a hole in it, my dress. My jersey dress um, and it keeps getting holes in it <laughs> and that's just because I am lazy but I can wear it so it doesn't matter um, yeah that's my approach to my crafting um, looking at my notes oh last on my to make list before the next episode uh, maybe who knows maybe in like a week I'll be like I want to do another episode who knows I don't know anyway um I am going to start making some shrinky dink jewelry I splurged a little bit at Michael's and got a bunch of jewelry uh, materials I used to work for a company um that made jewelry out of uh like wood veneer um, we used a laser cutter similar to, to the technique used on this except made of wood not acrylic um, and that's how I learned how to make jewelry and I never considered myself, I wasn't super interested in jewelry making, but, um, I don't know, shrinky dinks. I loved shrinky dinks when I was a kid and I do know how to make jewelry. So, um, actually my nephew, uh, requested a kitty necklace and a kitty picture and I love kitties. I have two of them. Um, so I am thinking I will make, I'll draw him a cat and then I will do that same cat design on a necklace and I got some cord and, um, so I'll make him a little necklace out of that same picture. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And then I'll make a bunch of stuff for myself. So shrinky dink jewelry. I want to make like Christmas bauble ornaments. I want to make tigers. I have a tiger dress. Um, I want to make uh, oak leaves. The possibilities are endless. So I do want to make some shrinky dink jewelry. I want to make some button jewelry. I want to make some pom pom earrings. And by jewelry, I really want to make a necklace. I used to be way more in necklaces, uh, but I don't know. As I've gotten older, the skin on my neck is like more sensitive. I don't know. Anyway, and with short hair, earrings are more fun. So. This glare is really bothering me. I think I just need to pull that whole shade down next time. Yeah. Anyway, live and learn. Um, last thing. So we've gone through what I'm wearing. We've gone through my finished objects, what's on my needles and works in progress. And then what's next? Um, which leaves, um, I do want to leave uh, each episode with a recommendation of what you can watch next. Um, of course I have dreams of having a whole backlog of episodes that you can catch up on because that's how I watch podcasts. I like to start at the beginning, um, and, and work my way to the most recent one. So 
Um, if you're just joining me, congrats. There's only one episode to watch. <laughs> um, but since there is only one episode to watch at this point in time, um, I highly recommend Inside Number 23. Um, by Katie. She's not super active now anymore. Um, she had a cute little baby who's probably like a toddler by now. Um, and that has kind of derailed her podcasting and kind of changed her priorities, which is totally fine. Um, but I love her podcast. Um, yeah, she knits, she sews, she's British. I like her a lot. And I like her podcast a lot. So um, I recommend Inside Number 23. And there will be a link to that in the show notes below. And I think, I think that's about it. So short episode, first episode, just getting going. Probably talk too fast. Uh, who knows? Now I have to think of a sign off. Oh, I didn't think of a sign off. I'll just use uh, one from my favorite audio podcast, TBTL. Power out. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.